from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of AWS reInvent 2020. Sponsored by Intel and AWS. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of AWS reInvent 2020. We're not in person this year, we're virtual. This is theCUBE virtual. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. Roger Barga, the general manager of AWS Robotics and Autonomous Services, a lot of other cool stuff was on last year. Always, you know, speed racer, you got the machines. Now you have real time robotics hitting, hitting the scene. Andy Jassy laid out a huge vision and, and data points and announcements around industrial this, uh, IOT, it's kind of coming together, Roger. Great to see you and thanks for coming on. I want to dig in and get your perspective. Thanks for joining theCUBE. Good to be here with you again today. All right, so give us your take on the announcements yesterday and how that relates to the work that you're doing on the robotics side at AWS. And where, where does this go from you know, fun to real world to societal impact? Take us through what you, how you see that vision. Yeah, sure. So we continue to see the story of how processing is moving to the edge and cloud services are augmenting that processing at the edge um, with unique and new services. Um, Andy talked about five new industrial machine learning services yesterday, which are, are very relevant to exactly what we're trying to do with AWS RoboMaker. Um, a couple of them, Monitron, which is for equipment monitoring or anomalies, and it's a whole solution from an edge device to a gateway to a service. But we also heard about Lookout for equipment, which is if a customer already has their own sensors. It's a service that can actually back up that, that, that sensor on, their, on the device to actually, again, identify anomalies or potential failures. And we saw Lookout for video, which allows customers to actually use their camera and, and build a service to detect anomalies and potential failures. Well, in AWS RoboMaker, we have ROS cloud service extensions, which allow developers to connect their robot to these services. And so increasingly, that combination of being able to put sensors and processing at the edge connecting it back with the cloud where you can do intelligent processing and understand what's going on out in the environment. So those were exciting announcements and that story is going to continue to unfold with new services, new sensors we can put on our robots to again, intelligently process the data and control these robots in industrial settings. You know, this brings up a great point and you know, and, I'm, and I wasn't kidding when I was saying fun to real world. I mean, this is what's happening. Um, the use cases are different. I mean, you look at, you mentioned, um, you know, Monotron, Lookout, but there's the pan, uh, Panorama Appliance. You had computer vision, machine learning. I mean, these are all new, cool, relevant use cases, but they're not like static. It's not like you're going to see them just one thing. There's like the edge has very diverse and sometimes mostly purpose built for the edge piece. So it's not like you can build a product like, okay, fits everywhere. Talk about that dynamic and why the robotics piece has to be agile. And what are you guys doing to make that workable? Because you know you want purpose built, but purpose built implies supply chain years in advance. It implies slow and you know, how do you get the trust? How do you get the security? Take us through that, please. Yeah, so to your point, um, no single service is going to solve all problems, which is why AWS has, has released a number of just primitives. Just think about Kinesis Video, where I can stream my raw video from an edge device and build my own machine learning model in the cloud with SageMaker that will process that, or I could use recognition. So we, we give customers these basic building blocks, but we also think about working customer backward. What is a finished solution that we could give a customer that just works out of the box? And the new services we heard about, we heard about yesterday we're exactly in that latter category. They're purpose built, um, they're ready to be used or trained for a developer to use end to end with very little customization ne necessary. Um, but the point is, is that is that these customers that are working in these environments, the business questions change all the time. And so they need to actually reprogram a robot on the fly, for example, with a new mission to address the new business need that just arose is a dynamic which we've been very tuned into since we first started with AWS RoboMaker. We have a feature for fleet management, which allows a developer to choose any robot that's out in their fleet and take the software stack, a new software stack, test it in simulation, and then redeploy it to that robot so it changes its mission. And this is a, this is a dialogue we've been seeing coming up over the last year where roboticists are starting to um, educate their company that a robot is a device that can be dynamically programmed at any point in time. They can test their application in simulation while the robot's out in the field, verify it's going to work correctly in simulation, and then change the mission for that robot dynamically. Uh, one of my customers 
that I'm working with, Woods Hole Institute, is sending autonomous underwater um, robots out into the ocean um, to monitor um, wind farms. And they realize the mission may change, may change based on what they find out at the wind farm with the equipment, with their autonomous robot. The robot itself may encounter an issue. And that ability, because they do have connectivity, to change the mission dynamically. First yeah. testing it, of course, in simulation is completely changing the game for how they think about robots. It's no longer a static program at once and yeah. have to bring it back in the shop to reprogram it. It's now just this dynamic entity that can test and modify at any time. You know, I'm old enough to know how hard that really is to pull off. And this highlights really kind of how exciting this is. I mean, just think about the idea of hardware being dynamically updated with software in real time and or near real time with new stacks. I mean, just that's just unheard of, you know, because purpose built has always been kind of, you lock it in, you deploy it and you send the tech out there, this kind of break fix kind of mindset. Yeah. This changes everything, whether it's space or underwater, you mean seeing everything. It's software defined, software operated model. So I yep. have to ask you, uh, first of all, that's super awesome anyway. What's this like for the new generation? Because um, Andy talked on stage in, in, in my one-on-one -on -one I had with him, he talked about, um, in, in referring to Lambda and some of these new things, there's a new generation of developer. So you got to look at these young kids coming out of school mm -hmm. to them, they don't understand what how hard this is. They just look at it as lingua franca of software defined stuff. So can you share um, some of the cutting edge things that are coming out of these new, new the new talent or the new developers? Because um, I'm sure the, the creativity is off the charts. Can you share some cool um, use cases? Share your, your perspective. Absolutely. Um, I think there's a, a couple of interesting um, cases to look at. One is, you know, roboticists, historically have thought about all the processing on the robot. And if you'd say cloud and cloud service, they just couldn't fathom um, that reality that all the processing has to, can, has to be, you know, can be moved off of the robot. Now you're seeing developers who are looking at the cloud services that we're launching and our cloud service extensions, which give you a secure connection to, to the cloud from your robot. They're starting to realize they can actually move some of that processing off the robot. They can lower the, the bomb or the bill of materials, the cost of the robot. And they can have this dynamic programming surface in the cloud that they can program and change the behavior of the robot. So that's a dialogue we've seen coming over the last couple of years that rethinking of where the software should live, what makes sense to run on the robot and what should be pushed up to the cloud, let alone the fact that if you're aggregating information from hundreds of robots, you can actually build machine learning models that actually identify mistakes a single robot might make across a fleet and actually use that insight to actually retrain the models, push new applications down, push new machine learning models down. That is a completely different mindset. It's almost like introducing distributed computing to roboticists that you can actually think about <laughs> yeah. this fabric of robots. And another more recent trend we're seeing and that we're listening very closely to customers is the ability to use simulation and machine learning, specifically reinforcement learning for a robot to actually try different tasks out because simulations have gotten so realistic with the physics engines and the rendering quality that it's almost near realistic for a camera. The physics are actually real world physics so that you can put a simulation of your robot into a 3D simulated world and allow it to bumble around and make mistakes while it's trying to perform the task that you frankly don't know how to write the code for. It's so complex. And through reinforcement learning, giving reward signals if it does something right or punishment or negative reward signals if it does something wrong, the machine learning algorithm will learn to perform navigation and manipulation tasks, which again, the programmer simply didn't have to write a line of code for other than creating the right simulation and the right set of trials. So the, it's like reversing the debugging protocol. It's like, hey, do the simulations, the code writes itself, you debug it on the front end, it writes itself rather than writing code, compiling it, debugging it, working through the use cases. I mean, it's pretty different. It, it is, it's, right? really, it's really a new persona. When we started out, not only are you taking that roboticist persona and again, introduced into the cloud services and distributed computing, but you're seeing machine learning scientists with robotics experience it's actually rising as a new developer persona that we have to pay attention to and we're talking to right now about what they what they need from our service. Well, Roger, I'm getting, I'm getting um, tight on time here. I want one final question before we break. How does someone get involved with uh, Amazon? I mean, obviously, you know, whether it's robotics and new areas like space, which is emerging, there's a lot of action, a lot of interest. Um, how does someone engage with Amazon to get involved, whether I'm a student or whether I'm a professional, I want to code, what's, what's the... What's the Absolutely. Look like? Absolutely. So certainly reInvent, we have several sessions at reInvent on AWS RoboMaker and our, our team is there presenting 
and talking about our roadmap and how people can get engaged. There's of course the Remars conference, which will be happening next year, hopefully to get engaged. Um, our team is active in the Ross open source community and Ross Industrial, which is happening in Europe in late, later in December, but also happens in the Americas where we're present, um, giving demos and giving hands-on tutorials. Um, we're also very active in the academic research and education arena. In fact, we just released open source curriculum that any developer can get access to on GitHub for robotics and ROS, as well as how to use RoboMaker that's freely available. Um, so there's a number of touch points. And of course, I'd be welcome to field any requests for people to learn more or just engage with our team. Roger Parker, General Manager, AWS Robotics and also the Autonomous Systems Group at AWS, Amazon Web Services. Great stuff. And this is really awesome insight. Also, you know, it's, 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 it's candy for the developers. It's the new generation of people who are going to get, put their teeth into some new science and some new problems to solve uh, with software. Again, distributed computing meets robotics and hardware, and it's an opportunity to change the world literally. It is an exciting space. It's still day one in robotics, and we look forward yeah. to seeing what our customers do with our service. Great stuff. Of course, theCUBE loves this content. We love robotics, we love autonomous, we love space programming, all this stuff. Totally cutting edge, cloud computing, changing the game at many levels uh, with the digital transformation. This is theCUBE, thanks for watching.